The few things that I believe were extremely important for, for in the first nine years was first the turnaround that we're able to do with ATV and uh, outboard engine. Uh, the, the refocus for broad product line on the high end and, and, and let go a few products that were not profitable. Also uh, in Valcourt, when we announced that the ATV would be transferred from uh, Valcourt to Mexico, it was a shock. But at the same time, the employee understood well that it, we had no other way out. And they accept the decision uh, with maturity. They trust, they trust us. That was definitely a very strong moment. After we had the, uh, the launch of the Roadster, which for me was an incredible experience. And in 2010, the launch of the side-by-side, -side, uh, which is complement to the ETV. And I, I am extremely proud of uh, the strength of the Canam brand. Also, I cannot uh, not talk about Skidoo and Sidoo, uh, our other brand and links that are very, very solid. Despite the up and down, despite the focus on the new products, we've been able to remain leader in, in those product line. Over the years, we have constantly pushed innovation, constantly pushed technology, constantly improved the handling, the looks of our product. And today, when I look at all our product lines, one by one, we are extremely competitive and uh, we're gaining year after year momentum and market share in, in all the industry that we are in. And I just came back yesterday from Cabano, where we test ride the snowmobile under heavy rain. And you need to ride our snowmobile versus the competition and man. I mean, we are a leader and I understand why. And it's, for me, it's a pleasure every time that we compare our product to the others, because that's at the end what the customer buy. The most difficult moment, definitely uh, the 2008-2009 recession. Uh, our first quarter of 2008 was the strongest ever, and we had a lot of momentum in the first half. In the second half of 2008, uh, we started to feel the slowdown in the summer, and we hit a wall uh, in the fall of 2008. Our sales have dropped by 40% uh, in six months and we had to step back and look at the big picture. And we have done what was right for the company. We have reduced production, helped dealers to clear out inventory, reduce our expenses. And those decisions were, were uh, needed. What was remarkable uh, is the support we had from our sponsor. Uh, they were really, really helping to find solution, but the most difficult of all those decisions is when you decide to reduce the workforce by uh, 2,000 people. Because you know, when you make those calls, that you're touching 2,000 family, you're touching uh, community where uh, those people are, and you're affecting the life of many, many people. But we had to do it. Uh, the people understand it. And uh, we did go through the crisis because of the support of our employees. The transition towards a Bombardier division and becoming a standalone company was a, was a highly emotional uh, period for me. In fact, uh, the sale itself was a, a very emotional period. Uh, I believe that uh, several of my gray hair were due to that period. Uh, I look at it in hindsight today, but. Uh, uh, at the time, it was, uh, it was very tough. We didn't know who would buy us, who would we be working with. Uh, this entire period was, was quite, uh, quite stressful, to say the least. It would imply that uh, we would have to create a new logo, a new image de marque uh, for the entire company. And uh, we were challenged to create this logo, having, uh, having to be somewhat very distant from the current Bombardier logo. Uh, yet we wanted to keep some heritage because if you think about it, the or origin of the sprocket is really, comes from our division. So for us to shy away from the sprocket was, was, was kind of a challenge. And uh, at the end, uh, we created something that encompassed the heritage. We retain enough of the, uh, 
of the sprocket, the original sprocket, but made it uh, quite a bit uh, more modern because this company is going forward and it actually had some kind of an opening inside the sprocket. It was not fully closed and pointing towards the future, becoming a, a company that's looking forward. It was emotional for me and, and the team, yet uh, I believe that what we've delivered was, uh, was a good reflection of uh, where we wanted to go. And, uh, but it took some time for us to swallow the, the transition. And, uh, you know, many gray hairs after, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, we were very successful with the, the creation of the new logo. The new design center, for me, it's actually my, I believe it's my 10th studio within the company. We've had uh, studios uh, in a few places, but uh, obviously when we, were, when we were sold and became a standalone, one of the sad things that I had to do is actually close the San Bruno uh, studio. One of the promises that uh, my new boss, uh, José Boisjoli, actually uh, told me at the time, he said, Denis, he said, I know it's a, it's a huge step back for you to come back to Valcour. However, uh, I, uh, I promise you that I will, uh, in due time, uh, provide you with a state-of-the-art studio again, once again. A few years have passed and we, were, we went back into the, the normal studio that we had and we had a, a split studio in, in Sherbrooke and Valcour. However, uh, Jose being a man of his world, words, what he had promised uh, delivered and he gave me the go ahead to imagine and create a, a state of the art studio. From the modelers, from, from the designers, from the engineers, from the technicians, everybody were involved and, and made it their own as, uh, as we were designing it. And uh, so it was tremendously easy to convert and take ownership of this new design center. And uh, becomes a great asset for us to attract talent wherever they may be uh, throughout the world.